Hello YouTube, how are you? I'm Who's Afraid of Eric Nording. Uh, before I get started with the purpose of this video, uh, let me thank a couple of uh, gentlemen from across the pond for some very generous shout outs uh, last week. Uh, Toking Tommy and Vinyl Piper, two good guys from Europe. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to their channels, uh, you should be. They're uh, two interesting guys, so thank you very much gentlemen for the shout outs. And I also want to thank all my new subscribers to my channel. I think I'm up to about 119, which is a lot more than I thought I'd ever get. Um, so thank you very much and welcome to my channel. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit more unusual today. Uh, the topic of this video is, of course, uh, I'm going to compare uh, some European cities to pipe tobacco. Now, I've been very lucky in my life. I've been able to travel and live abroad, uh, mostly in Europe. And uh, I feel I have a, a good feel for uh, European life, especially Central and Eastern Europe. I spent some time in Western Europe, which I do like as well. And I'm going to uh, make the unusual comparison of uh, European cities to some pipe tobacco. Okay, so I'm afraid this video might run on a little long, so I want to get started right away. And the first place we're going to start in is one of the more popular places in Europe right now, and that is Prague in the Czech Republic. I hope that's showing up on the camera. And uh, as I said, in the last 15 to 20 years, Prague has become uh, one of the more popular places in Europe for uh, travelers, especially new travelers to Europe, but maybe someone who wants to branch out from um, Western Europe. Um, I once heard a uh, young woman here in Canada tell me that um, every coffee shop in Prague has an English teacher hanging out in it, and uh, I do believe it's true. I've known lots of English teachers who've lived in Prague. Um, great city, absolutely beautiful, really like it. Uh, you know, I have some Czech friends who every time I go there, they're more than happy to show me around. Uh, not only Prague, but the country of, uh, of the Czech Republic, which is a very beautiful country, lots of lovely little cities. And I liken Prague to McClellan's Balkan Blue. Now, this isn't usually a tobacco someone goes to immediately when they start pipe smoking. Much like Prague isn't a city that uh, most people go to right away when they start traveling in Europe. Um, but I do think it is an absolutely terrific tobacco. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I think if, if you watch people's uh, top 10 lists over the last few years, this tobacco is slowly but surely creeping into most of their top 10s, and word is getting around that it's a great tobacco, much like word has gotten around about Prague, that it is a, a terrific city, one worth visiting, and, uh, and uh, you can't go wrong, I don't think, with either this tobacco or the city of Prague in the Czech Republic. Um, similar to Prague, but uh, a city that doesn't get enough recognition, and one of my absolute favorite cities in all of Europe is a little bit south of Prague, is Budapest, Hungary. Uh, as I just said, Budapest is one of my absolute favorite cities in Europe. I used to live there. Uh, it's my first love in Europe, and uh, it's it's often compared to uh, Prague, and it often takes a, a back seat to Prague, which I think is extremely unfortunate. Uh, I think Budapest is just as beautiful as Prague. Um, it's certainly cheaper, more of a laid back atmosphere, and word hasn't gotten around as much that Budapest is such a great city. Uh, like Prague has and therefore there's not as many tourists. It's it, you don't have the long lineups um, It's certainly not as expensive as Prague Budapest is very cheap to visit great place to uh, uh, Party or hang out or travel through uh, I can't say enough good things about Budapest and I liken it to McConnell's Oriental I think this is very much like Balkan blue Except this does not get as much recognition as Balkan Blue does. And I think it's unfortunate because this is one of my absolute favorite tobaccos. Uh, it's, it's in my regular rotation. It has been now for a couple of months. Uh, if you watched my first video, you'll, uh, you may have remembered that I compared uh, McConnell's Oriental to Balkan Blue. And I think this is a terrific tobacco. And it doesn't get enough press, at least not with pipe smokers. And if you watch people's top 10 lists, it rarely ever, if ever, makes it. And I don't understand why. It is such a good tobacco. I know these things are a little bit uh, subjective. But uh, I think this tobacco is very much like Budapest. It doesn't get the uh, recognition of other tobaccos, yet it's just as good, if not in some times better, than uh, some of the other tobaccos that get um, a lot of press, if you will. Um, so I highly recommend you visit Budapest and I highly recommend you try McConnell's Oriental. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. 
Okay, let's head in to Southern Europe to a, one of the most popular countries, not only in Europe, but in the world. And let's look at Italy. Um, I know lots of travelers, the first time they go to Europe, they usually go to Italy. And uh, I don't blame them. Italy's a beautiful country. It's got, uh, everything has got great food. It's got great history, culture. Um, Italy is everywhere in the world. Anywhere you go, there's something, a taste of Italy in every country in the world. And I can see why. It's, it, it's quite wonderful. And I liken uh, Italy to the Frog Morton series, most notably Frog Morton Cellar, Frog Morton on the uh, Town, or Frog Morton on the Bayou. And you compare you compare these to Rome, Florence, Venice, Milan, any of these cities. Um, when someone, a new traveler, goes to Europe, usually Italy is at the top of their list and one of the first countries they go to. Much like with new pipe smokers, they tend to gravitate towards the Frog Morton series. And I see why. I like Frog Morton. I, I like them all. I haven't tried one yet that I haven't liked. Um, they're great for new pipe smokers, much like Italy's great for a new traveler. However, that comes with a caveat. Uh, I like Italy. Uh, I like Italian people, certainly nothing against them. But Italy's dirty. Uh, Rome is dirty. Uh, the, the, the canals in Venice is dirty. Uh, Milan isn't the cleanest city I've ever been to. Uh, Florence is gorgeous, and Florence I think is very clean too. But these other cities, I think they're, you know, they're dirty. There's, there's lots of thieves around in train stations. You really have to be careful. And that's sort of the, the uh, uh, my relationship with the Frog Morton series right now. I like it. However, it, I'm getting a little bit tired of it. It does. I find it goops up my pipes. You know, it's it, it, and that's a, a downer for me because I, I have some really nice pipes, and at the end when there's a glob of something at the bottom, it doesn't make me very happy at all. And while I still like the Frog Morton series. Um, I'm starting to move away from it a little bit, and it's not part of my regular rotation anymore. Much like when I go to Europe and I'm traveling around, Italy is not. I mean, I like Italy, and but it's it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't do it for me anymore. And I uh, and I can't say I'd never visit Italy again. I would certainly go there again, but it's not in the, the top of my priorities for Europe. Okay, let's move to Western Europe to another extremely popular country and one I like very much. Now let's take a look at Spain. A few years ago, I met a very attractive young Spanish woman here in Canada who told me that if I ever go to Spain, um, I should uh, go to Madrid. That uh, most people, when they go to Spain, they go to Barcelona and they love Barcelona. Barcelona is a great city. But in her opinion, uh, she was from Madrid, of course. She said Madrid, she thinks it's a better city. And she doesn't understand why um, Barcelona gets all of the attention in Spain. And uh, I agree with her completely. And I liken it very much to Rattray's, uh, some of the Rattray's blends, most notably Marlon Flake, which I compare to uh, Barcelona. It's a terrific tobacco. Uh, I think uh, when most people go to Rattray's, this is the first one that they try, and they're rarely disappointed. Uh, much like when people go to Spain, the first place they visit is usually Barcelona, and they're rarely disappointed. I've met a few people who don't really care for Barcelona, but in general, most of the people I know uh, adore Barcelona. And most people I know adore Marlin Flake, and I don't think you can go wrong with either one. However, uh, I prefer Madrid. Uh, I think Madrid's a great city. I think it's it, it's my favorite city in Spain, and it's well worth visiting. And I liken it to Old Gallery by Rattray's. Uh, when I tried Marlin Flake, I liked it. I thought it was great, but it's Old Gallery that I like more. And it's the one when I when I feel like uh, trying uh, or smoking a, a Rattray's blend. This is the one I'm finding I'm going to more often than not, and. Uh, much like when I go to Spain, I simply prefer Madrid. I think it's it's the better of the two cities. And uh, and if you haven't been to Spain, uh, I highly recommend going there. Spain is it's gorgeous. Uh, ever since I uh, read uh, George Orwell's book, uh, Homage to Car uh, Catalonia, or uh, a lot of Ernest Hemingway's short stories, it made me really want to go to Spain, and I, I never regret going there. It, it's a terrific country, great people, and uh, much like Rattray's Blends, you can't go wrong uh, with them. All right, let's move to somewhere a little bit different. Let's go to back to Central Europe, very close to Prague and uh, Budapest, and let's go to a city I like very much, and let, uh, to Vienna. And uh, much like Vienna, um, I liken uh, uh, Vienna to uh, GLP's Gaslight, and here's why. The first time I went to Vienna, 
Um, when I was living in Budapest, I went over for a weekend. I thought, why am I not living here? It's absolutely gorgeous. The cobblestone streets, the, the I don't know, it, it's just a very romantic city. It, it's got uh, these great little cafes and uh, it feels like you're stepping back into the 19th or 18th century. Um, I really like Vienna and uh, it's very clean, it's very relaxed. As I said, it's very safe. Um, and it's much like Gaslight. The first time I smoked Gaslight, I thought, why, what has taken me so long to smoke this tobacco? It's absolutely terrific. Um, I, I like Gaslight very much. It's in my regular rotation uh, right now, anyway. Uh, and I remember when I first went to Vienna, I started visit, visiting it on a regular basis. I really like Vienna. However, uh, I find Vienna is a great city Monday to Friday. If you were, you know, had a family and you were living there, it, I think, uh, in that regard, it would be terrific. However, Vienna on a Saturday night is boring, man. There's nothing to do. The cafes are boring. There's nothing going on. Budapest is much more exciting on a, or Prague on a Saturday night than Vienna. And it's like Gaslight. I like Gaslight. I smoke Gaslight on a regular basis, but I smoke it when I'm not sure what I want to do, but I want something I'm going to like. So then I go to Gaslight. But if I want something a little bit more exciting, a little bit more edgy, uh, as something a little bit more uh, experimental, then uh, Gaslight is not the one to go with in that regard. So much like Vienna, I don't think you can go wrong with Gaslight, but it's not going to, I don't think it's going to blow your socks off and it's not going to uh, be as memorable as some of the other tobaccos that are out there. Okay, let's move to Northern Europe, to a small country that I don't think very many people know of. Uh, I don't think very many people in the West even know exists. And if you do, uh, you probably, you may think uh, like me in that it's one of the most charming places in Europe. And that is uh, Estonia, most notably their capital, Tallinn, uh, very close to Helsinki. Um, I first went to Tallinn in 2010. I went there for a week and I loved it. I, it's such a clean, relaxed, uh, calm city with very friendly people. Uh, nothing, no one moves very quickly in Tallinn. Nothing happens very... Uh, quickly, but I, I like that atmosphere. After being in Paris and after being in some of the more hectic cities in Europe, it's such a welcome relief to go to such a lovely little city like Tallinn. It's very small. Um, they've done a lot to get rid of the old Soviet relics in the city, but some of them are still hanging around. That They're part of the infrastructure of Tallinn, so they can't really get rid of them yet. But I highly recommend that little city. And I liken it to a tobacco that most people don't know of, and that is Former's Bird's Eye Flag. Uh, the first time I heard of this tobacco was in a top uh, five list by Nathan Campbell. I think last year he did one and he mentioned how much he liked this tobacco. And I, so I went out and bought a couple of Tim's and I really like it as well. I like it for what it is. It's a simple Virginia Perique. It's not going to blow your socks off. Much like Tallinn is not going to blow your socks off. But if you respect it for what it is, I think you can get a lot out of it. And uh, for me, uh, Tallinn is the best in the summertime. It's not very hot. It's usually 18 to 22 degrees. You have the Gulf of Finland blowing in this wonderful breeze. And then same with uh, Bird's Eye Flake. It's, it's a safe tobacco. It's not going to wow you. It's not going to, you know, no one's going to be writing a, uh, you know, a 200 page sonnet about uh, Tallinn, much like no one's going to be uh, making a YouTube video exclusively about Former's Bird's Eye Flake. But I do think both of them are worth trying. If you want to go somewhere a little bit off the beaten path, and uh, something that's not going to break the bank, uh, oh, but something that you're going to enjoy. I think you can't go wrong with both Tallinn, Estonia and Former's Bird's Eye Flake, okay? Um, now let's move to uh, my current favorite city. Um, some people might think it's Minsk. If you know me, uh, I'm a big fan of Minsk, Belarus, but we're gonna go a little bit uh, more south to the city that I was recently living in and I'm moving back to, and that is, of course, Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I love Kiev. I, I'm a big fan of Eastern Europe. It's, it's my favorite part of Europe. Um, I first went to Kiev in 2010. I was traveling around and I thought I want to go somewhere off the beaten path. And I went to Kiev and I told myself if I ever return to Europe to teach English, that's where I'm going to go. And that's where I did go in 2013. It is off the beaten path, of course. Uh, a lot of things are written about Ukraine that some of it's true, some of it's not. Some of it's over-exaggerated, some, some of it's understated. And uh, it reminds me very much of Sutliff's 
a quart of St. James. This is a tobacco that Briar Boy talked about in one of his videos uh, a little while back, and he was right on about it, uh, about Sutliff. Anyway, Sutliff has, gets a bad name because of its aromatics, but there are some good quality tobaccos in their lineup, and I think this is one of them. This is not expensive by any means. I think this tin is seven, $7 or $8. It's very cheap, and, but yet I think the quality is there, and it reminds me very much of Kiev. Uh, I think... Uh, Kiev is, Ukraine in general is not a very expensive city to go to. Uh, it gets a bad name because of corruption and now recently because of the war. They, you know, they had a revolution in Kiev and now there's a war in eastern Ukraine. But I think there's so much to Ukraine that is uh, worth seeing and worth experiencing. Granted, it's off the beaten path. It's rough around the edges. It's not for the new traveler. It's for the more experienced European traveler, someone who likes a little bit of adventure. And I think that's very much like Court of St. James. I think this is for someone who has a palette for uh, uh, trying something a little bit out of the ordinary. Again, it's not going to blow your socks off, it's not going to wow you, but it's going to be something a little bit different for you. And uh, I think if you're a traveler and you like Europe and you maybe you're a little bit tired of Western Europe and you want to see something a little edgier, I do recommend Kiev, Ukraine. I also recommend Minsk, Belarus, which is right above it and I think could be likened to Court of St. James as well. Either one of those. Uh, Minsk might be the better choice because they're not having a, a war in the country right now, but there are big differences between Minsk and Kiev. Don't let the proximity of these countries fool you. They're two very different cities, uh, very different atmospheres, and uh, I think uh, I much prefer Kiev. It's just got much more life to it than in Minsk. Anyway, that's my best attempt at comparing pipe tobaccos to European cities. If you've never been to Europe or you've only been to maybe some of the more major players in Europe, maybe this, you know, and you're a pipe smoker, maybe this will give you an idea of some different places you may want to try. Anyway, thanks for watching uh, this video. It's probably the longest one I'll ever do. I appreciate you hanging in for 17 minutes. And I uh, thank you once again to all my subscribers, all my new subscribers, and Toking Tommy and Vinyl Piper. Once again, two good guys. Make sure you sub their uh, channels, okay? Have a good day, guys, and I'll talk to you very soon.